at least now I know I'm 100% confident that I'm not, you know, uh, getting behind on watering, that we're keeping up to it. And I mean, really the whole point for us is I just want to grow as much pasture efficiently as possible. Hello, and welcome to Hunter Smarter Farming Irrigating for Profit project. In this series of videos, we have a look at ways to measure to better manage our irrigation systems or to better schedule our irrigation. Today we're going to have a quick discussion about readily available water or the raw zone when it comes to talking about soil moisture. It's pretty much a bucket. If that bucket is full and just right, our plants can optimise growth. If we go to the top of this zone or what we call the field capacity, we actually begin to waste water. We'll see water logging or we'll see runoff, a waste of our resource. If we go below or to the bottom of this zone, we get to the refill point. Below this zone is where we're actually stressing the plants. We're not optimising their growth because they can't readily get access to the water. So that sweet spot for irrigation, the one that we're all striving to meet, is that raw zone. Why is this important? It's really important for two reasons. Number one is that we're allowing the plant to readily access the water, use it and develop. And that leads to good plant growth. The second reason is that we're actually creating an excellent platform for our inputs, the other things that are costing us to grow this pasture or crop, especially nitrogen. If we have good soil moisture, we can optimise the efficiency of our nitrogen use. So what are the things that affect the raw zone or that sweet spot? If we're thinking of it as a bucket, then we're actually thinking about what's going in and what's coming out. Fairly simple concept. So what's going in? We're talking about rainfall and irrigation. How effective is that at lifting our raw? The other thing we're talking about is evapotranspiration or the losses from the system. The raw can also be influenced by soil type and also by the plant type. So we need to consider these things when we're having a look at what that sweet spot is for our system. What's going into the bucket, what's going out of the bucket and what's the makeup of that bucket. So what is one of the fundamental things that we get wrong in trying to stay in that sweet spot or that raw zone? Timing is a big one. What we tend to do in the dairy industry as irrigators is that we delay startup. That might be the beginning of the season or it could be after rainfall. What we tend to do is we think we're saving on water and we're saving on labour and on power by delaying startup. But what we're effectively doing is we're actually not optimising our growth potential. What we do is we allow soil moisture to go below that refill point and then it becomes a catch up game. We're reliant on the capacity of our systems to be able to lift us back up into that raw zone if we've depleted our soil moisture. So we have to then run our irrigators more often and therefore we're using peak power to do so. And this is actually a really big hit to the pocket or the input costs of the system. So getting scheduling right at the start of the season and after rainfall is integral to ensure that we take good opportunity of our current soil moisture and we keep it within that raw spot so that we're optimising the opportunity for our pastures and crops to grow and to develop and produce good feed. So what is it that we actually need to be measuring to manage our irrigation scheduling better and be more effective? Well, really there's two fundamental tools that aren't really that expensive, but are very effective in helping us make those scheduling decisions. Number one, one is some kind of water balance tool. So that's using rainfall data, evapotranspiration data, and information about the soil and plant characteristics to do a water balance, 
to lift you up into that raw zone. So it does some calculations on when you need to water and how much. Number two is something that actually allows you to see how effective your irrigations, all the rainfall is being and to what depth. And that's soil moisture monitors like here at Tokal Dairy. This allows you to have a look at where you're sitting within that raw zone, how the bucket's looking, and actually helps you monitor what's going into that bucket in terms of the rainfall and the irrigation, and what's coming out in terms of evapotranspiration. These two tools can help you make more informed scheduling decisions. Okay, we're here at Tokal Dairy with Matt Brett, who's the manager of the dairy farm here. Matt, um, recently uh, Tokal had a program of putting in soil moisture monitors under your three pivots. Um, and we're here to, today to just discuss how that's changed the way you're managing your irrigation scheduling. And really, do you think now it's making your uh, scheduling more effective? Yeah, um, well, thanks, Marguerite. Um, yeah, look, I reckon our moisture monitors are yeah, certainly a great help. Now we can basically tell exactly when the plants need water or what our soil moisture is doing in the soil and down to a depth, we've got a few 40 centimetre probes and then we've got some 80 centimetre probes as well. So we can sort of look at what crop we've got in and work out where their root zone is and we can basically then work out exactly, you know, what that readily available water is doing in the soil and we can turn the pivots on, uh, you know, before we get to that point where, you know, they're, they're already starting to stress and we can keep the plants at their optimum growth um, all the time. Right, so you've really taken away that guesswork, that visual, yeah. and you're actually now using more yeah. measurement to yeah. do like, that. We're pretty lucky here. We've, we do have a weather station, uh, you know, here on, on the college campus. Um, so we're pretty good with knowing, you know, what temperature and evaporation, all that sort of stuff is is doing. But yeah, we were never 100% sure what, what our soil moisture was doing. So. Um, yeah, now there's no guesswork yep. at all anymore. We can say that, yep, at 10 centimetres, we've got this much water, 20 centimetres, we've got this much water, or, you know, and, and down further. So we know with our ryegrass, especially early on, we need that moisture, you know, up the top when, our, when the roots are, uh, you know, only little. But yep. um, as the plants mature, obviously the roots can go down a bit deeper and we can, we can keep that moisture right through the whole profile. So Matt, um, I guess the other question is, are you using some sort of a, a water balance tool or water balance decision in making some of your irrigation scheduling decisions going forward and your planning? Yeah, well, we, we have got eerie pasture. We, we are using that to an extent. I suppose um, here with the weather station close by, we are looking at that um, you know, fairly regularly. Yeah. Um, so forecast of for, rainfall, yeah, temperature. ETO, that's right. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. Temperature evaporation, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and yeah, look, I would be probably interested to to look at the Yuri pasture um, tool a little bit more in depth and, yep. and use that a bit more going forward. So but really, I, you're using. You, you know what your bucket, your raw bucket, is yep. looking like because of your probes. Yeah. But you're also looking forward to sort of see, well, what's going to be inputted into that with yeah. your rainfall and your irrigation and what's going out via yeah, evapotranspiration. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, th I think the probes are really the, the key part to it, honestly, yeah. to know. But, yeah, then, of course, we need to know, is there a hot week coming up? You know, how much moisture are we likely to use um, or to lose, I should say? Yeah. Um, yeah, so all that plays into getting the balance right, I suppose. So I guess the key question, for people really also is is it making a difference are you seeing a difference in the growth of your pasture and those those growth rates i guess yeah well i suppose it is um i think at least now i know i'm 100 percent confident that i'm not you know uh, getting behind on watering that we're keeping up to it and i mean really the whole point for us is i just want to grow as much pasture efficiently as possible you know so i want to get you know we pay a lot of money to establish and fertilize our pastures so we want to make sure we get that absolute maximum growth out of it all the time so we have plenty of grass so we can convert it into milk solids and hopefully um, make some money out of it so, so fundamentally yeah. the platform is good soil moisture yep. then gives you the opportunity to take advantage of all the inputs that are going in yeah absolutely so there's a few messages that we can take home from this about getting fundamentals right. We need to be keeping soil moisture in that raw zone. In order to do this, we shouldn't delay startup at the start of the irrigation season or after rainfall. We want to optimise that rainfall 
and use irrigation as a supplement to keep up in that raw zone wherever possible. So we need to think about that raw on our property, what it looks like for each soil type and for all, each pasture or crop type that you're growing. The other thing is have a look at the ETO. Make decisions based upon that and based upon the capacity of your system. These are a few fundamentals that we can be doing immediately.